Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to quickly try to go through the third Republican primary debate. A bit later on, we're also going to take a look at some of the recent polling. So we've got a lot to get through. I'm going to try to go quickly. It might not happen. But let's start with that third debate. And I think this was a much better debate than the previous two. I think the biggest factor is there were only five candidates this time. That made it much easier to follow and spread out the time evenly. Also, the moderation seemed to be decent this time. So what are the takeaways? Well, the first half of the debate seemed to be all about foreign policy with Israel, Ukraine, and China. If you're looking to pull back foreign aid, you weren't really going to find it from these candidates. Now, some of these issues and conflicts overseas, they're complex. There's no great answer. But one thing that does seem apparent, there does seem to be an eagerness to provide billions and billions of dollars to other countries and other places for various causes. Maybe you think that's a great thing. Maybe you think that's a terrible thing. There was talk about building up the military and building new ships. I think a lot of voters do want that. I know there's always a fear of reducing the military budget at all. But when you juxtapose that with a lot of the issues we've got going on right here at home, suddenly the eagerness and enthusiasm seems to dry up much quicker. So that stood out to me in the first part. The second part did get into some more issues. Social security came up, and I don't think any of these candidates really gave a good answer. Chris Christie talked about raising the retirement age. That, I think, is going to go absolutely nowhere. Even if he absolutely believes that's the right approach to take, I think that's going to be an unpopular position. There's a lot of talk about not raising any taxes. That's always a crowd pleaser, except I do think the Republicans would be wise to say that the ultra wealthy could chip in a little bit more. They could lift the cap on the Social Security income limit. Those are things I think would be popular and I think they make sense. But the best I heard was Warren Buffett should not be taking his Social Security check. There was also talk about abortion. I've said it many times. That is a topic that helps the Democrats. Even if Republicans do not support an outright ban, which many of them don't, they're still going to be branded with it. Kind of like defund the police. Even if Democrats backed away from that position, it was still so associated with them that it was hard to shake it off. So the positioning and the messaging on that issue is going to be a struggle for the Republicans. The thing I would like to see happen is have every state vote on what point they think that there should be a cutoff for allowing abortion and if they'd like any exceptions. You could also go into things like public funding. So it might not be practical, but kind of a multiple choice referendum. That's what I would like to see. I would suspect most people want it allowed, but there is a point that's going to vary from state to state where a reasonable cutoff might be and what those exceptions should be. They also hit the border and opioids. That's a topic I do think favors the Republicans. It's sort of like defund the police. Even if Democrats are not in favor of open borders or even anything close to it, it's definitely going to be more associated with them than the Republicans. So getting the border under control by whatever means necessary, I think all the candidates agreed with that. There were some small differences on how to go about it and them actually following through on it. That's another question. But overall, I think the debate went pretty smoothly. Now, as for the individual candidates, Chris Christie, I think he has the right disposition, but his popularity has crashed. I don't think he gave the right answer on Social Security. Some of the other questions I think he did fine on, he does directly answer whatever he's asked. Then we had Nikki Haley. I never thought she did as strong as other people did on the first two debates. This, I would say, was her best performance of the three. I do think she comes off as too hawkish. She did go at it a little bit with Vivek Ramaswamy. At one point, she called him scum after he said that her daughter uses TikTok. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. I don't think she knocked it out of the park, but I think she did well enough. And we've got DeSantis. This also, I think, might be his best performance. He seemed to be steady. He gave direct answers and seemed to be relatable enough on the issues. I think Nikki Haley did hit him on not allowing drilling in the Florida Everglades. If that makes him too liberal on the climate, I don't think he's going to care, and I don't think that really hurts him. Then we've got Vivek Ramaswamy, and this guy is polarizing. My perception is everybody outside the establishment, Democrats and anybody on the left, they despise him. There's a lot of similar with that description with Donald Trump. And if you want to hear some answers that are not pure status quo, then Vivek is your guy. He does speak well, and maybe you think he's wrong on all the issues, but I think his willingness to break some of the norms, that does have a lot of appeal with voters. He also threw out a heels joke saying Dick Cheney was on the stage in heels. That was about Haley and DeSantis. And he talked about being careful on college campuses to not go down the road of censorship on some of these views that might be anti-Israel. He also talked about the northern border with Canada. You might think that's crazy, 
he nobody's talking about that? Or he might think that's great. He's the only one talking about it. And at the end, he hit Biden on not being the candidate who's actually going to be the nominee for the Democrats. That, I think, is a good move to acknowledge the Democrats are not having an actual primary. And last, we've got Tim Scott. Scott, as always, comes off as inoffensive, seems like a nice guy, probably better suited as a running mate. But overall, I don't think he made a big enough splash. At this point, for me, it seems like the two weakest candidates were Christie and Tim Scott. I don't think anybody wiped out on their performance, but I think the three in the middle stood out the most. So that's what I think you could look at some of these other outlets to see what their takeaways are. Some of it I agree with, some of it I disagree with. That's how it goes. But that's a quick wrap up of the third debate. The fourth one is going to be in about a month, and it looks like that's going to be in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Now let's go on to some of the recent polling over the past several days. I'm not going to go into specific detail about each poll or the cross tabs, but I've got Real Clear Politics pulled up. We've got some polling from New York Times and Siena College, and I'm going to say that it's a year out. Take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but these are overall disasters for Biden. Nikki Haley seems to be doing the best, winning by 14 points in Wisconsin, 53 to 39. I think that is a total outlier, and I think that if Nikki Haley was actually the nominee, then she would be under intense scrutiny. Her popularity would sink. I don't know if she would lose, but a 14-point gap, I think that speaks more to the weakness of Biden than the strength of Haley. But in almost every state, the Republican candidate is winning. There's some DeSantis in Biden, there's Harris in Trump. The most likely event is Biden and Trump. But in those states, Trump is winning all of them except Wisconsin. But if you look at Nevada, Trump is somehow up by 11 points. I don't really buy that at all. He might be winning the state, but double digits seems way beyond what's possible. But if he has an 11 point lead there and a five point lead in Michigan, a four point lead in Pennsylvania, seems unlikely that he would only be up by two in Wisconsin. I would think he's going to win Wisconsin before he wins Pennsylvania or Michigan. Even Harris is doing better than Biden in Michigan. This also seems like an outlier, but somehow she's beating Trump two points in Michigan compared to Trump winning by five. Now, if you go to Tuesday, the same pollster, they're getting into a three-way race here between Biden, Trump, and Kennedy. This is a much tighter race. Georgia, Trump is ahead by seven still, but Pennsylvania and Michigan are tied. Wisconsin, still plus two for Biden. Nevada, Trump's still in the lead big, but it goes down to six. Arizona is a tie. Now, Kennedy polling over 20, even up to 25 points in Michigan. That, I think, would come down as the election season gets underway. Right now, I'm sure there's a lot of voters who don't follow politics. They don't really know what to make of Kennedy. They might hear the last name. They might hear that he was running as a Democrat. They might hear he's been more embraced by conservatives. They might hear he's not pro-establishment. So there's an allure with a third party right now. And maybe I'm completely wrong and he only increases his support to 30%, maybe even higher at some point. But I think it would come down under 20 if both sides start beating him up as they fear he might take more votes from their side. Now let's take a look at Wednesday. CNN has some polling out. Trump up against Biden. Trump is up four. They have a four-way race here. Trump, Biden, Kennedy, Cornell West. Trump is up six. There are some other polls on here. We've got one from Marquette in Wisconsin. That has Biden up 50 to 48. Somehow Nikki Haley again up nine. DeSantis even up two there. So in Wisconsin in the Marquette poll, Trump is doing the worst. Biden even hitting 50% there. So those are the main highlights. We really have to wait and see what's going to happen in the polling once we start getting into next year and go through the primaries. Plus, we have to see what happens with Trump and his legal cases. And Democrats don't really want Biden to be their nominee. We have to see if that leads anywhere. If it does become just Biden and Trump, it's really unknown how much pro-Trump is going to come out of the woodwork, how much anti-Trump voters are going to be. There's not just one or two different factors here. There's probably more like eight to ten significant things to consider when trying to gauge the outcome next year. If it is a three or a four or a five-way race, it's really anybody's guess as to what's going to happen. But the polling right now, it's fascinating and it's not good for Biden. It could easily change next year. This week, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to a coin flip battle, but I will have a four-way hypothetical matchup coming up tomorrow that I had made before this polling came out. I don't think it would change much. Again, this is just a snapshot in time. I'm trying to gauge how the result would be in a year. It's definitely not easy, but tune in for that video. And I'm going to leave it there for now. That covers the third debate and some recent polling. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about that third debate? Who do you think had the best performance? Who do you think flopped? And how about this polling from the past week? Do you buy it? Do you think it's all way off? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join or donate if you'd like to support the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.